take a KT roster and it was Team Dynamics that got the win in game number one. Team Dynamics, their draft was really bold, picking up Ash for the first pick. A lot of critics were being questioning the Dokdam's carry potential, so this could be a huge pressure over to Dokdam. But unlike Aphelios, Ash is more like a lane oriented pick. And KT Roaster answered that with Seth and Kalista, they also have a very strong lane priority. However, KT was not able to capitalize on the priority they, that they were able to get from the bottom lane. Team Dynamics, this time around, they pulled off a very similar playstyle of that of Damon Gaming. Team Dynamics, they have a very strong topside as well, so Google was also able to freely roam around the um, southern, uh, northern south of the map. Mm. And to put this whole story short, Team Dynamics, their bottom lane was stronger than everyone expected. So earlier to this fight, Ash and Seth treated their flash for flash. So they all have a very obvious target for this fight. They had to go for Ash. Katie Roaster, but they made the worst decision possible. Aiming instantly cleansed and jumped over the map, the wall to stay intact, so he couldn't even cast his ultimate to save, save set. It's not about Kennen and Vladimir, their contribution for team fights. It's more about how the AD carries pilot that fight at that certain moment. Kalista was doing not much work for that fight, so well, the, um, it was more like a 4v5 fight. If Kalista was trying to save Seth from that engage, he had to be in close proximity to cast his ultimate. That's how Kalista and Seth come, kind of utilized their aggro juggling, but so we took a look at the aiming score with this Kalista champion. So that was second Kalista game of the summer split, and he is sending 0 to 2 so far. He never got a win yet on this champion, and also Tucson doesn't really have a lot of success on set as well. So maybe Team Dynamics, they figured out that it is okay to let Kalista through the hand of KT Roaster. Later on, KT Roaster looked really lost all throughout the game. But take a look at the um, red side vision. The pin goes down onto the uh, blue camp, kind of predicting where Cannon would be. So Seth and Lee Sin was in a really pro close proximity for Klista to maybe kick him away or maybe just pull him out of Klista, but this fight was truly disjointed. There were two champions that can just drag Cannon away from the AD carry, but the um, combo coming out from Klista and Seth was so bad and their reaction was really off. After that, the last team fight, team fight Seth made his engage on to Ash, but he didn't have enough follow-up. On the other hand, Team Dynamics, they looked really confident, executing all the setups they planned. Now it's time to take a look at the player of the game on the side of Team Dynamics. It's Rich on Kennen. Already 600 pop points. That 2v1 fight on the top lane was 
so golden. The 2 on 1 was not KT's mistake. It's rather rich being so cool headed and being so calm. <laughs> I mean, he did all he can do on this cannon pick, so he deserves this POG. Soan could also pull this kind of flank angle or 2v1 fight, but that early gameplay coming out from Kennen during the laning phase was so critical for both teams. Rich joining the Pox standing board over here on the fourth place, tied up with Burl and Showmaker. Rich is definitely one of the outstanding top laners here in the LCK. Despite the current situation with his team, Rich is coming out really strong as an individual player. And also, it hasn't been a while since he rose up to the top lane. A very successful rose up coming out from Rich over here. And now it's time to check out the game number two. Who will be the top of the East here in the LCK? Thank you so much, Chisun, for the Analyst Desk translation. A well-deserved pog there for Rich. Not sure why Doc Dong got any votes, but uh, <laughs> Rich certainly played very, very well. Yeah, That outplay topside was fantastic, but he also got all of the flanks and doing 30% of your team's damage. As a top laner, always pretty impressive. Yep, uh, it was, uh, let's, let's be honest, it, it was one of kind of... Uh, resident slippery. Game. It was definitely a doze off uh, yeah. in that game. Not a lot of action, and then pretty yeah, but understandable team fights for dynamics, and then they won the game. Yeah, but you know, it's not dynamics' fault. It's KT's fault. Yeah, they were not doing anything actively, and they're just like inting left and right, up and down. Well, we'll see whether they do it again, as we are in the yep. pick and ban for game number two. KT now on the opposite colors of their team colors and on the blue side, where yeah. generally you do find some more success here in the LCK. Uh, especially, uh, I am hugely like disappointed about KT's bot lane, because yeah, Dynamics bot lane should get stomped by them, yeah. you know, but I guess uh, that was really smart threat by Dynamics, you know? That just giving uh, Duck Dumb and uh, Gugur Ash Pantheon. I think it was really smart. I think KT probably want to be focusing on the Ash, trying to get rid of that one. I think uh, Gugur getting the respect ban on the Bard is definitely good. Santa Bard were what ban uh, KT banned on the red side as well. And uh, they're going to ban Trundle also. Interestingly enough, might mean that they're going for another Callista first pick which I think would be very confusing. Ezreal going to be banned here, finally, yeah. on Dynamic's side. And so Karma, left available, and is something that KT can go for. Very flexible, very strong. Yeah. Unless it's uh, top Karma. I don't think uh, Karma is good right now, because, I mean, stats level eyes. Yeah. And except uh, top Karma, it seems like it's pretty bait, bait pig right now, at this moment. Well, I think the Ash is a fantastic pick here for Dynamics. I think they should go back to it. Yeah. They could even lock in the Pantheon as well. They for sure. Take away the bottom lane. I think Azir is going to be the choice. Yeah, in one, two, three, they should end up with Pantheon, and it's gonna be simply just same draft as last game, mid bot lane, yep. mid and bot lane prior. I like it. As KT, they do get the Karma-Olaf combo. This definitely makes Olaf better. Bono also, decent Olaf player. He yeah, was a two-trick of Olaf and Lee Sin. That was all he played. Probably... And Jarvan. Yeah, they're looking for mid-Karma. Because, yeah, I don't want to see more of Kuro's Echo. On the yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping that Kuro's relegated to Karma duty. He most likely is, you can see looking very bemused right now. Not exactly a happy boy. Oh. As this could be aiming Aphelios. Yeah, we forgot about this guy. The problem is, is that Aphelios doesn't do fantastically well into Ash in the laning phase. Unless the Ash just runs at him when he has the right guns up, which uh, generally gets the Ash killed. Yeah, and that also, doesn't matter. Yeah. Pantheon just picked up here by Dynamics. And also Dynamics is gonna ban 
uh, peeling supports like Thrash or something, or Tom Kench as well. Or they can just ban it or just ban Chase. Or ban Lucian and Aatrox. On Don't care about side. the bowling. See whether they do that. And yeah, just ignoring the bottom lane for now is that Chase is going to be banned. This is Dynamics assuming that the Karma's going mid, and I think that's really smart, especially when you see the Olaf. Being able to get the uh, Karma over to the Olaf as quickly as possible is definitely a good idea. As KT, yeah, they're going to go anti-rich banning. Yeah, that bash should be like... That should be locked in already. Should... You should be able to like pre-select it, no matter what the draft is doing, and just like ban it away from Rich so he I mean, doesn't get onto it. Yeah, the reason why they're using full time is they're talking about the picks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they're just like, hmm, yeah, we already banned Aatrox Lucian, right? But let's talk about the picks. Let's take the time. I'm thinking about the Lucian. I don't know whether it's all that necessary because oh. Cannon is going to be banned. I think it's also great Lucian game because they already have Whoa. mid bot lane prior. And if you pick up Lucian on the top lane as well, then you have three lanes of Pryor with Nidalee. And that is just the dream. The dream of the Nidalee and also Lucian. And they've got an immobile A to carry. So Nidalee going to be able to have a better time landing Spears. Now so on thinking about just taking a little bit more power into this top lane as the Wukong is selected. That will confirm that uh, Karma is bot or mid lane. Now, what is Tucson going to do? The Karma could help as far as trying to control the bottom lane, but we'll put a target on his head. Pantheon can certainly effectively try and burst her down. We'll see what happens. Ooh. Okay, it is going to be the support Karma. Okay. I mean, if support Karma picks up the Guardian and Exhaust, then you can just fi be fine in lane. Yeah. Do you want to be fine in lane, though, with Karma support? Oh, no. Oh, no. R5 Renekton. Up. Please. No. I mean, it's six seconds. Please. Rich. No. I mean, please. I mean, Renekton is fine. <laughs> no, I it's mean, not. It's never fine. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's good tool for Nidalee, you know? Nidalee always w wants uh, Renekton on the top side because he, she can always easily pick up some kills on the top lane, you know? <laughs> well, I don't know, man. There are decoys available for the Wukong. Might be able to get himself out of the way of that. And then uh, Wukong spins a little bit better than the Renekton. This is Rich. Rich does pretty amazing things on uh, on champions that may not necessarily uh, be supposed to do it. This is the same bottom side of the map as game number one, but a couple of changes elsewhere. There's no longer the Trundle yeah. and the Cannon. It's going to be Renekton Nidalee. We have... Uh, Switched our Saints out for some Sinners. Yeah. As we head to the top side. And by the way, it's Tushin's range support. And I, I, I don't think I ever seen this before. Long time no see. Yeah, I actually like uh, Tushin used to be the one to pick up Nami. True. Uh, back in the day, he was very, very good. Like like old days. Yeah, yeah. A few well, years ago or, yeah, or real, something. Many, many moons Many, ago, many my years. Friend. I have seen quite a few, uh, you know, sunrises yeah. of the League of Legends at this point in my career. And uh, yes, that was certainly a few moons ago. But we'll see how he's going to go on the Karma support. Certainly will be able to help the uh, the Aphelios get through the lane. And we know that Aiming is a brilliant Aphelios player who was one of our best in the league when we were talking Aphelios, Aphelios, Aphelios. Uh, you know, last split and of course the beginning of this one. So we'll see. KT, now blue side advantage. We've seen be so powerful. Let's see whether they can actually win the game, as Dynamics do have a lot of early game power when it comes to Beyond and Rich top side. Mm. By the way, it's a double, uh, double super start. And that means maybe they're looking for the level one invade. Could be some aggression available. Yeah, already swept on the bot lane brush. Maybe they're, they're going to clear out. The tribal uh, ward right now. Ah, they couldn't. No. Bunch of pings there as Beyond playing the Bewitching Nidalee, my personal favorite skin. I remember when it got released, I had to wait a year to be able to get it again, and it was so annoying. I was like, should I buy it? Many and I was just jealous forever after the release of that particular skin. So thank you very much for reminding me of that one, Beyond. And wait, there is Aerie. 
exhaust karma support. Whoa. That's really interesting. Yeah. It's, it's air is really balanced, you know, like it attack also protect at it the does. same time. It does do both. But normally you just pick up Guardian if you want to be like protecting support. Or you just pick up Common. But be if really you, aggressive. If you just protect, how are you supposed to attack? You know? True, but you're playing as Ash and Pantheon, so you might need to just protect only. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I mean, I'm wondering if he can pull off the power of the Karma enough on the bot lane because you're gonna get pushed in as Karma, and I don't think you want that. No, especially not up against a melee support. You really shouldn't be letting yourself uh, get pushed in. That is exactly what's happening. As we can see, three extra minions on the side of Dynamics. And yeah. That is a value spear from Guga. Yeah, I mean, especially when it comes to the Airy, I think Airy should uh, use uh, by uh, the champion that who can auto attack a lot in lane, you know? Then I think Airy can be really like broken spell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then you can use Airy 24 7. You can active that. But in this kind of situation, if you auto attack, then you're gonna get CC, then you're gonna get the one shot, right? So you can't auto attack. And also, your skill shot is going to be on the minions 24 7. So, well, yeah, that's true. So, I don't think that was a great choice. I would just go for Guardian and Exhaust to save my Aphelios. But, yeah, we'll see what's going to happen. Well, he did manage to hit Guga with that one. So, shout out to Tucson. Nailing it. Guga also just poking and poking and poking him with this big old spear. Slight advantage in CS here for aiming. But I think this lane is more about Dr. Arm and Guga staying alive, getting to level six, oh. and uh, having that arrow to really lay down the hurt. Hey, I think aiming is just one between this lane. He's I mean, just he pushing is. out the Pantheon, and Dr. Arm cannot couldn't do anything. And Neil is here. Yeah, Fion coming down. Does have only half health, but there's the stun. Spear lands, but onto a minion. Not what we want. Is Guga going to get taken down to 200? And now going to get snared. That one's going to land as Dr. Um has to be exhausted. Beyond Dion comes in. He's going to help shove this one out. See whether Dynamics go for a bit of a cheater recall. Or whether they're going to try and get a plate here as uh, Aiming and Tucson are very low. Yep, looks like that cheater recall is coming in as uh, Dr. Um's going to get back first. Let's see whether it's Boots. Yeah, it is. And a cull, the dream. Yeah, I mean it's not changed at all, you know. They have, I mean, Dynamics have has a mid lane and bot lane prior, so yeah, they're just using it correctly. I mean, they got top lane prior as well. I mean, yeah, things only got better in the top lane. But unfortunately, because of the attempt ganking on the bot side, but look at the bot lane's goal, and yeah. I mean, you should able to get both sides of scuttles when you have three lanes pushing. But it, it was not happening. Well, they're looking for this dive potentially, but uh, you know, the decoy can be very annoying. So, beyond going to uh, not go for that one, Kuzan still playing very well here in the mid lane. I feel like Kuzan's feeling himself today. Yeah. I mean, look at the CS difference. Yeah, it's insane. Kuro is just getting brutalized. And now he's coming back with a tier. And so his life is not going to get better. He has no Year consumes. only? Yeah, he's uh, just going to have a real roughie. Wow. That's, yeah, it's not. So good. they're not going to have mid lane for the rest of the game, I think. No. Nope. Yeah, like, just like last game. Especially Echo not being useless. While. Whole game. Oh, there's the stun under so on. Rich going to slice his way out. Not sure whether he's got a dice or not. And I don't think he does. There's the teleport. Kuzan's coming back. He was in base as well, so he's going to have a bit of a shop here to come in with. As so on doesn't have the decoy, as you can see, only level five for Kuzan. But is it going to be enough? The spear avoided there by So on, but there it is. The happy bees come in. Level six is gained, and Kuzan unfortunately immediately dies right afterwards, going for a little bit more than he could chew. Yeah, uh, maybe that was too much because he was already losing mid wave, so he should just go back to mid lane ASAP. But yeah, after that, I think Kuro is happy with this exert. Yeah, yeah, he's alright. Does he's mean chilling. that, uh, yeah, Kuro brings it within 10 CS. 
Yeah. He's chilling and also aiming. He just... Yeah, he just bought a bar... Uh, attacks with boots, so... He's just forcing the lane pressure against them. And so just slowly KP's getting, getting... Yeah. He's having a horrible time up here. For so sure. So on the Wukong just really not... Not having a great one. Let's see whether that means that Olaf has to spend some time up there towards the top side. Wukong is, of course, going to be endlessly more valuable as the game goes on. Guga into the brush as he gets snared. It's going to mean that he's okay. This lane confuses me really, because I feel like Ash should have lane priority, but I also feel like Karma should have lane priority. So I don't know who uh, necessarily wins. It feels like yeah. Ash versus Karma. No, I mean, I already said that. Like, aiming is just one between this lane. Well, yeah, but that shouldn't happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think, feel like yeah. Tristan should be putting on more pressure. Very strange. Let's have a look at this one more time. Break it down for us, we did. Uh, great prediction by Kuzan. So that was really great uh, by Dynamics, but I think they should know that Bono has Flash, so... And like, also, Kuzan should have known that he was getting smashed by the turret. Yeah. I mean, the turret did everything there. <laughs> so what I mean is, like, uh, if you respect enemy, then you do not, like, attempt those kind of plays, you know? Because they can always dodge your skill shot with their, with their Flash, you know? Well, Kuro flanked at the moment as there. Kuzan's going to make his way towards the minions. There is a flash, so... Oh. What? What? Because he's Corgi. That went through his wing! What? That yeah, I mean, he's robbed. He is. So that needs to be a flash out from Guga. Knocked arm. Also takes half of his health bar. Really well played here by KT's bottom lane. This is what we were expecting from these guys last game. They couldn't really bring it. Rich spotted on this ward. He's just going to blast cone his way out, though, as uh, so on. Just getting outplayed. By the looks, by this crocodile. Nidalee gonna have to get out of there though. No Shelly for Dynamics. I mean, it feels like it's similar to the last game, early game, right? Uh, KT just slowly getting back the pressure and making the champion itself the theme. Slowly erasing that, you know? Like Ash Pantheon having an early pressure. Nothing happening. Yeah. Did they got the Drake with, the, with that early pressure? No. Not happened. And also, the Corky with Tear, he just farmed. Yeah, and actually didn't lose too much. Yeah, nothing much. And they traded some kills on the top side, and Nazir lost a flash and died. So yeah, I mean, the game is just slowly getting better for the KT side. Because if you go to the late game, there's no way KT is going to lose this game with Corky plus Aphelios. Yeah, it's crazy scaling. So, so they're they're stabilizing this game pretty well. After that, like uh, silly, silly, small uh, accident on the top side. I think it's still going to be mid game where dynamics really start to peak. As uh, beyond down to 200 here, as uh, dynamics are going to start off this ocean Drake. Some honey fruit will bring the Nidalee back up to full health or half health. I think we'll be able to secure this one. So there we go. Dynamics do trade a uh, objective on this map. I mean, they deserve it because of the draft. And also because of the Azir's crushing yeah. of this lane. I mean, Azir, Ash, Pantheon, you have to get the first trick. Otherwise, your pick is useless. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amy taking a bit of damage here from Guga. Got himself some Tristana and some Cogmore. I know, Jinx at the same time as well. Yeah. Yeah, Jinx, Trist, I'm not sure which one it is. Yeah. He's, he's like 11 different champions at the one time. As Bono just comes over, steals a Rift Scuttler. The Korean commentators get absolutely crazy excited. No flash, by the way. Yeah, going to be out of pounce. Oh, no. He's just going to die. <laughs> that's an axe to the back of the head. Yeah. The thi that's the hard counter to cats, by the way. Yeah, and also there is a Herald on the Bono's hand, so... Yeah, this is going to be more money for Kuro. Great news. Great news for sure. When it comes to this matchup, you just need to reach two items or three items. And then Azir can be complete useless champion into Corky. Now Rich up here, he's taken two turret plates so far. And uh, we'll see how Soan is actually going to fare as this game, this lane continues. It's currently 30 CS behind, 31 if you want to be pedantic. 
Rich. Yeah, so Rich really is trying, yeah, trying really hard. Yeah, he, he needs to, to this stomp game. this lane and then get out and kill Aphelios <laughs> three times or something like that. But I think he's doing it, and uh, at this point, no one can reach to him because Koki is not ready, right? So it's only Bono who can help it. But I think at some point, Reach will be able to one take the 1v2 on the top side. And that's the timing when Dynamic should use that advantage to the bot side because I do think Ash Pantheon, they need to do something. Like, yeah, they are tools for the early game. They are the keys to snowball early game. They should start something. Well, yes. there's the arrow. It's going to land immediately on Tucson. The flash into the Empress Divide, and that is a free kill from Dynamics. I love it. You say it, and then it comes true. Would it? Yeah, thank you so much. They are listening. Yeah. We should probably not allow that. They shouldn't be oh. able to listen. That's true. Yeah, that's uh, that's map hack. I mean, that that's, have, that's yeah. the basic, you know, that even I know. Well, I mean, you're a professional uh, League of Legends player. You should probably know. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah. They did the basics. So, I'm glad. Kuro down to half. Still going to get uh, conquered a little bit from the sands that Kuzan has available to him. There's a man drop. It's in, uh, that's at the ready here for Guga. Dr. Um, he's just going to shove this wave in. He's looking to go back. Ash Arrow halfway through its cooldown. Same can be said for the Emperor's Divide. Let's have a look at it one more time. Yeah. This uh, was, uh, I believe, oh no. The <laughs> casually just walk up and steal the scurrils and one plus one. And then beyond face planting into the wall up here. He's like, I've got a cool wizard hat. I'm hiding in the wall. No. But yeah. Duck Duck. This is his champion, man. Yeah. I reckon he's a lot of work. I guess that's why uh, Korean commentaries. This gave him the POG vote <laughs> for the game one. But he did get very like excited. being a being a player. Yeah, he's like he, he, in the game. he was useful in some capacity this game. Woo wow! Finally, Dynamics has AD carry in the bot lane. It's the dream. Po -po. Oh my God, Rich is destroying so on. Holy moly, man! What is this? This is Rich. This is this is top lane Faker, man. Yeah, that's true. Like, he's doing so much work for the team. And finally, the ball lane is also doing something. Yeah, I mean, they're the 12 team. CS behind, which ain't great. <laughs> yeah. But this is range, range versus range melee. I mean, it's like, uh, I think it's more like theory that Dark Time is behind in CS, you know? Yeah. Like, it's always happening, so I don't want to mention it anymore. The thing that's like really difficult here this game is that someone has to build Trinity Force first and it just doesn't feel good when you're already getting dominated to For have sure. like no tanky stats whatsoever is uh, he's going to get ganked but so is Kuzan. He's going to shift some sands to get out and Soan's going to go invisible and create a copy of himself and he'll get out. And uh, there's going to be no successful ganks here but there might be some successful turret takes. Undertow not going to land, Guga is going to make his way in and I think that Dynamics, although they're going to take a fair bit of poke, they're not going to suffer death right here as Rich is going to try and walk up, get himself a bit of a stun and so on. Getting taken down very, very low. He's going to flash, but no fadeaway spears here for Beyond, but he's still going to have to give up on this whole minion wave. Yeah, the top lane difference is coming real hot. Ooh, Valkyrie. Pretty good counter to that particular ability as Rich tanking up the turret for a long time. Beyond comes in, spear connects. Rich has to flash to get himself out of the way of that one. So the aggression... Going to have to be tempered a little bit here by the Dynamics top laner. There's Guga now, spotted by Tucson. Snared up, aiming, looking to come over. Doesn't have the greatest of guns for this particular scenario. Would have liked a Calibrum, but beggars can't be choosers. And uh, yeah, that has to be a bit of a shield up from Guga just to avoid the Mantra Q damage. As Doc Dom goes back and uh, his cull has been completely paid off. And he completes his Blade of the Ruin King. Yeah, so the game is still half-half, but it's the Dynamics who is trying more of some situations because, yeah, they should know that they have Corky and Aphelios if they reach to the late game. Pretty low chance. Yeah, well, this is Blade of the Ruin King, Renekton, that just completed his Blade. And there's the man drop package. It's going to be taken away as our Rich is going to get caught out, but he's just going to turn it. 
as this Renekton likes to do in the mid-game and just destroys Tucson one more time. Bono, trying to run away, does have a fadeaway axe to throw. Yeah, and it should be the second drake for Dynamics, and I love how Dogtime is just casually throwing the arrow towards mid 24-7. <laughs> yeah, that's how he's supposed to do it, man. He's like, I'm helping. Yeah. Please, let me try and farm. <laughs> and it's going to be Infernal Drake this game, and I mean, if... Dynamics wanted a way out of a late game horror story. Stacking up an Infernal Soul this game is definitely a way to do it. And their composition should be strong if they can get both of the next two. After that, I think the expiry date might be up. For sure. And I think at this point, Rich can just simply 1v2 here. I think so too. Yeah. He's really, really strong. 40 CS up still after Soan got a lot of free time. Now Dynamics looking for this bottom lane. Side trade. Good guns for aiming. If he misses that first Q, there are very frustrating spears being thrown endlessly towards this bottom lane. And uh, yeah, you get tagged by that Q, you take a lot of damage, Doctor. His mana not high. Still with his blade active available. Yeah, and KT, I think they're not on rush. They, they just realize that they have the late game pump. So they're not taking that much of fight. They're just doing what they can do right now, which is just slow down the game. Yeah. But yeah, as you mentioned, Dynamics already got the two drakes, so it will be the point when it comes to the fourth drake. Maybe even the third drake. And yeah, this was the play that Reach and Google made. <laughs> the arrow sails by. I like that. I feel like Dynamics need to do that every single time Guga has his ultimate available. That's the play that they need to try to make. I agree. See what Kuzan's going to be able to get done this game as well. He has his Nationalist Tooth com completed. Beyond has actually not decided to buy a uh, Rod of Ages this game. He's very squishy on the Nidalee, but I think he's recognized that he needs to be as useful as possible, as early as possible, as Kuzan. He's going to flash, gets himself out of the way, over the wall, with his Shifting Sands, but has to use his flash to do it. Yeah, great draft, uh, draped. But still, yeah, both teams are just doing so, so well for now. But there is just no kills. I mean, it has to be Dynamics that makes the plays though, right? Yeah, for sure. As, uh, aiming will take down the bot out of turret. They'll trade it for Shirley, who's not exactly the highest of value. They probably want to be able to put it down in this mid lane, open this map up, make more demands here onto KT. So on, pokes his head around. I like that little stop. That was very cute. Ah, okay. Yeah. The burn damage going to do it. I think if Dynamics can push this mid turret with this header and just finish out the first mid turret, first mid outer turret, then I think they can snowball this even easier. But because of the mid turret, it seems like their vision control is kind of passive. And also, uh, they're not looking for the fight actively anymore. So I think yeah, they have to get that mid turret just right away. And then they will be able to control mid lane more, like deeply through the mid lane and towards the side lane prior, you know? So I think they just need to make sure that header is used on the mid lane. Well, I think that's exactly where Beyond is going to go. It's not already. It's not even halfway off cooldown yet. Is Shirley so has some time to make up his mind. But as the Ophelios is going back to collect his uh, Runeon's Hurricane, could be a good time for the Nidalee to shove down. Yeah, and I think, Shirley. yeah, they're waiting for Rich right now. Rich already pinged that he's going to push one more wave. Because he has no TP, he's going to move towards the mid lane or reset and run through mid lane all together and try to use this header. Yeah. Wow, Kuzan is uh, eating a lot oh, of he didn't uh, reset. aggression. As, uh, yep, there's the slice and the dice. And Rich gets the Cyclone out of Soan. That means the next team fight is going to be one that Soan's going to be useless in. For sure. And next Drake is coming, and I don't think uh, Kong is going to get pulled back in 30 seconds. There's no chance. And also, I do believe this Renekton got the second item. Oh, beyond has to flash. 
Dokdam is here. Arrow at the ready, but they don't want to use it because they want to save it for a potential Ooh. fight. Teleport in from Kuzan. He's got a burning face as well on the way. Looks like Leandri's second and a half item. Yeah. Frenacton is also running towards mid. Yeah. Slytherin as fast as this guy can go. Dokdam gets chunked by a little bit. KT do have position in this river. Dynamics can get there at a moment's notice though. Ooh, that shield being off cooldown is certainly a big deal. But now, Shirley's gonna buy space. Aiming has to be respected. My god, he does a lot of damage. It's Dynamics grouped up as five. Package delivered. Kuzan immediately goes off to the side as now Kuzan just singled out and destroyed. His Emperor's Divide did nothing. Kuga's now running for the hills, does get himself. His shield back as Rich looking for the back line, but he's not going to be able to get in there and do anything of note. And Dr. Arm with his arrow missing and a big crocodile next to him, but no way to actually challenge. This might be Dynamics falling apart because if they don't manage to stack these Drakes, I don't know whether this comp can actually hold on. Yeah, and that was the greatest uh, Valkyrie package i ever seen in LCK. That was just so clean. He just finished off uh, the team fight with one Valkyrie. And that was all. Really well played by Kuro there. Yeah, uh, Kuzan just absolutely nothing he could do. He just wanted to press R so that he could say that he did something in the team fight. We're going to have a look at it one more time. Let's just watch. Keep your eyes on Kuro. He's got something to deliver. That was just so clean. And also, they couldn't land the CC chain on the Corky, so you cannot use the team fight when you miss most of the main skill shots for the engage. You can see Dynamics still trying to fight position around this map. Not going to give up just yet. Still ahead in gold. We're talking about it because KT do have that scaling advantage that we talk about does feel like Dynamics are losing further and further control of this game. And it's only 100 gold, like this game is 100% even. Yeah. Leandri's complete for Kuzan, his flash now just back off cooldown. So a possibility that the Azir will be able to get some work done. But I mean, the Renekton's ahead, yes, but you can see aiming's up. You got a thousand gold ahead on Bono's side, and in a Nidalee matchup, that is not something that you want. If you're the Nidalee, you should be uh, playing this early game a lot better. Not actually able to. And when you're behind, like building the Rod of Ages feels so bad. If you don't have Rod of Ages, you feel so squishy. It's just 100% bad news. Yeah. Yeah, but I think uh, KT is also making it almost 70% right now because of Mikael's. Well, they Arrow is going to come down. Up. That's a yeah. great exhaust great on the Guga, who goes up to full health almost immediately with that Athenes and the Primal Fury. But oh my god, take those years to the bank aiming. As he does help grab those three kills in mid lane. And yeah, I feel like it might already be time up now. Yeah, I think they didn't check that Karma got the Mikael's. There's no way to catch Aphelios like that. Because he, he's gonna use cleanse, and he didn't even use his flash because of the Mikael. Yeah. You did see the Athene's value. That was definitely good, but unfortunately, there's just too much DPS. And KT will now grab the Baron. They're ahead by 3,000 gold instantly. And uh, that's only gonna get worse. Yeah. And uh, I just checked that Karma got the Mikael's, you know? And yeah, they should focus on Karma or something, but I don't know. Like, that was just so horrible engage because Reach was not able to join the fight, right? Yeah, I mean, he's he's looking for a Wukong that just decoyed and ran away. Yeah, I mean, what I'm saying is if Pantheon and Renekton can flank on the Aphelos at the same time, then there's more chance, you know? And I, I think it's higher chance to get Aphelos right there, but... Yeah, great bait by Amy using defensive item and defensive spells to uh, in an aggressive way is that kind of moment. Yeah. You can always step up. Maybe Hybrid should take some notes. Yeah. Maybe he should watch this game. Yeah. Hopefully he is. You know. Take points. Get as much info as possible. There's uh, Kuzan lying in wait, but there's no one else here. 
The Renekton's still strong, but one crocodile against the world. And especially as this game ticks towards 30 minutes, it is a disaster as uh, Blade of the Rune King used onto Tucson. He's very fast. Gonna get out of the way of the tether. And now there's a teleport coming in from the Wukong. Five members of Dynamics are in the area, but they're scared of him. <laughs> Guga's gonna flash away, and that's not the uh, approach that I was expecting. I thought maybe they'd just try to kill him, but nope. Yeah. Ash and Nidalee's flash is out. Okay. okay. Yeah, Ragnarok on cooldown now. Zrich is still strong. Guga has ultimate. He's waiting. He really wants this opportunity. There's a teleport from Rich available as well. He's going to move over to the mid lane, try and hold on to that one as they're defending this Baron as best they can. Currently 2,200 gold, the Baron power play, and there's still got a minute to go. As Rich is getting chunked by all of these big ones coming from Kuro. This yeah. was one of Kuro's uh, best champions, actually, uh, over in the LPL and before he left. They're, they're even tanking the turret right now, so I think the game is already heavily on the KT side. Yeah, I just... Their comp does way more. Way more damage, yes. Isn't it weird that fifth pick Renekton is going to lose again? That is true, and... Yeah, it's so strange. I think it's more on Nidalee, because I, I don't... We didn't see Nidalee just invading on the Olaf side when uh, he has three lanes of Praia, right? So I think it's more on Nidalee. Yeah, who maybe. was not able to snowball this game. Because, I mean, Rich was stomping top lane. Oh, there was a 50, uh, 50 CS difference at some point on the top lane. And it shouldn't be like... Uh, I mean, it's Renekton, still there. Like a I thing. mean, there's a 60, 60 CS difference still. Top yeah. Lane. So what I'm saying is, I think Nidalee was not like good enough to use that tools. I mean, it was not only Renekton. Ash and Pantheon got the bot prior, and also mid Kujan was just having so much pressure on the mid lane. So he should be able to push out the Olaf and make him uh, really nervous in his jungle. But it didn't happen, you know? So I think that was the point. Well, there's an Empress Divide out from Kuzan. As uh, in comes Guga as well. I believe there is still a decoy available. Is yep, so on looking for the 1v1. He's going to get it. Guga now wants to try and answer this with a kill, but unfortunately for Dynamics, Wukong's a good champion, and Renekton's a terrible one. So it doesn't actually matter that he was put so far behind. He's still Wukong, as he is spotted by that Enchanted Crystal Arrow. Really nicely played from Holy Soan, and Holy. honestly, like, get your honors ready for this Wukong. Look at this man aiming. I love him. Oh. He got QSS and Starwatch and cleans the Mikhails. <laughs> Holy moly, this player is the best he is carry in the world. Super good. Super good. Super good player. Not great in game one. However, he's turned uh, no. it around no, with his we are not talking about that incredible game. amounts of defensive itemization. That rocket from Corky was just gigantic. Dynamics now all Moonlight Vigil comes in. And uh, they're all chunked to half health. They're going to lose this inhibitor as well as the mid lane one that fell earlier. And now this game is pretty much over. 200 IQ. Yeah. Item build. And I just, I never want to see uh, Renekton picked as a counter pick to anything ever again. <laughs> so I'm like a QSS machine. <laughs> QSS robot. And you're like a Renekton robot. Well, I mean, I. You're at least being yeah, positive, you know, as uh, we're going to see what uh, someone uh, was talking about. Bottom, bottom side. Classic top lane. Yeah, I was Saying nothing. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, maybe I'm uh -huh. lying here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, I'm lying. Haha, I see you with no flash. Ash no ulti, haha. Why would Doctor ult there? <laughs> I actually don't understand. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he should try something. I guess. Because the game is already doomed. But if there's four people moving towards the mid lane, maybe you want it in order to try and stop any potential dive there. Yeah. Mikhail's is done for aiming. Yeah, you know what? Uh, whenever we watch uh, the pro view by the top laners, there was nothing to like say. It's like Chody's they're they're not saying well. anything, you know? He just says, actually dump it, nothing. Yeah. Even though he's doing like the most amazing play ever. Yeah. Just chilling. 
before the super play by Chovy, he's like, can we do this? And nothing. Yeah. And then he does the play. Yeah. He's like, and after that, can we add this? Yeah. <laughs> Hit no flash. <laughs> uh, can we do this? <laughs> maybe. Uh, maybe. <laughs> KT, they can do the Baron. For sure. Um, aiming, he's uh, not even offering his DPS. They feel like uh, they cannot even answer. Is going to be enough. Yeah. Hawkshot is going to give Doc Dom the bad news. Look at Soan. Oh, I love that play. Cheeky. Yeah. Stand still. And in he goes. Arrow is going to connect, but he has the decoy. Baron's going to fall down. Soan's decoy tank an entire butt. Boatload of damage. And uh, aiming loses a bit of health, but he's got a huge shield because there's a karma on his team. Looking for the bait. Yeah, the Fnatic Brush. Uh, so on, he's brush. going to walk into it. He does go golden after the decoy, and the rest of KT move on over. I don't think... Uh, uh oh Remember, as that was griefing, I think. Had a goo. <laughs> oh, Doctor. He's like, let's look for the next game, guys. Wow, yeah. Look at Bono. He is angry. And Kuro is going to be able to grab that kill. I feel like this game turned entirely around because Kuro delivered dynamics of package. Yeah, for sure. So what do you think was in the package? All right. It's uh, possibly an Emperor's Divide. Does absolutely no damage. And aiming is just flashing forward. Trying to pick up the rest of these kills. That was a big old crit. On to beyond, and he's sent to the death chamber, and so is the Nexus. KT will even out the series against Team Dynamics. It was slow, it was methodical, but they didn't pick Renekton, and they won the game. Oh man, both games were like, one side was just empty, and like nothing was happening. Yeah, yeah. And also the drafts were pretty odd. Yeah, well, for sure. But yeah, uh, I guess, uh, that was not enough, the Ash Pantheon for the uh, Dynamic Spot lane. And after they change it, KT, on the bot side, they just choose to pick for the late game, mid game, team fight more, and just flex the Karma, and it worked out. Yeah, and uh, look, maybe it's a champion pool issue for Rich True. on the top side of the map, because the Kennen was banned, the Jace was banned. I think Lucian was available, but I don't know whether they wanted to pick it, and I don't know whether the results would have been any different. Uh, because, no. of course, uh, Lucian is very early game focused as well. It's pretty hard to play Lucian against the Kong in lane. Yeah, it's and also you can't set up anything yeah. for the Nidalee to go and gank, even though they weren't doing that anyway. I but think uh, I think you were right. Like, Beyond's Nidalee looked yeah. invisible. I mean, I think uh, with three lanes of Priya, he should do something. Yeah. But he did nothing. I, I, I do think it's uh, Jungle's fault, not about the, the laners, you know? Oh. Who are you going to give player of the game to? Uh, I think package deliverer. Package? Yeah. I think it just, I think Kuro wins uh, that one play. True. But also Jungle have played really well. Yeah. yeah. Olaf. No, or should you ever give Olaf a player of the game? Maybe you He's give gonna it to be a boring for person. staying in the game. It's true. You know? Uh, From adversity. He found success. I mean, because like it's really hard to give it to Kuro. Because I mean, Kuro's going to win. It. Obviously, here. obviously, Kuro's going to win the player of the game. It's, yeah, right. That's already happening. Do you want to look silly or don't you? I guess that's going to be a question for after the break, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you for game number three in just a few.
몰라 풀 판테온? 판테 풀 판테 풀 어, 판테 풀 바로 바텀 가서 바텀 밀자 뭐야 이거 뭐야 이거 그냥 버프 줄게 기만 버프 줄게 여기여기여기여기여기 마지막 사 나쁘지 않은데 나쁘지 않은데 아 실드 돼 실드 돼나 지금 갔다 올게 여기 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 이거 그거밖에 없다. 아지르 토스. 아, 내가 토스 뺄게 이거 가서. 기다려 봐. 아니 근데 어차피 딜러 풀다 있어도 괜찮아. 어 딜러 같은 자리면 다시 말고 천천히. 봤어 봤어. 아지르 못 빠져 오케이. 기대 웨이브 오고. 타워 깨자 타워. 아. 여기. 어 죽을 뻔했다. 나이스. 